do this. Hey, hey, oh, yeah, <laughs> wow, that's hey. I mean, for daytime, yeah, that's pretty, a naughty for daytime. <laughs> pretty saucy. <laughs> it's episode, what episode is it? 91? 91. 91. Of Alex and Jim. We're analyzing the lyrics of it's young William Joel. William Joel, yeah, that's what we do. And moan about our physical ailments as well. I think we did a good service to the people. Yeah. We take care of that before we signed on. Yeah. Um, by the way, I've been watching uh, uh, your monologue, the one that Seth delivers. You guys are great. It's been really oh, fun. Thank you. It feels like you enjoyed the time off because the it, they're very nice. The, yeah. You know what helped? I think he did a lot of stand-up shows during the strike. And he is just getting more and more comfortable. Yeah. That makes it... That opens up the kinds of jokes you can give him yes the confidence that he has you can now you you know it, i used to say you could give tina fey a b minus joke and she would deliver an a and in the old days i would say if you gave seth a b minus joke you get a b minus <laughs> <laughs> now he's getting better at like heightening whatever you give him oh that's great yeah. I love to comment on one of them, but I want to share it with you. So it was, is her name Sidney Powell, the lawyer who yeah. just um, uh, pled guilty and got a plea deal? Yep. Uh, so Seth does an impression of her in a recent monologue. Uh, I just want you guys to know he's actually doing an Al Gore. <laughs> That's probably right. He's for sure doing it. And it's not, he's a dude, she's a lady. So that's what happens. But <laughs> he's just doing an Al Gore. Yeah. I mean, th those two people pr have a very similar accent. Yep. For sure. And, I mean, and here's the thing about being comfortable with the show. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. Yep. Somebody calls him out on it, he won't like cry. Well, that's what makes him great. I am. <laughs> that's what makes yeah. him great, is he's not worked out. It's whatever. The preciousness isn't there. Yeah. You know, it's very it's a great thing about doing a show, you know, four nights a week is it's disposable. Yeah. And if a joke eats it, you're like, oh well, see you tomorrow. Absolutely. And his his focus is different than a Jimmy Fallon. And and I'm not going to knock Jimmy Fallon. There's plenty of people doing that today. <laughs> but, you know, where Jimmy Fallon has his whole thing is energy and being likable and laughing along and the precarious nature of acting like you're always in a good mood. Yeah. Is All the hosts do their best work when they finally just become themselves on mm -hmm. TV. Yeah. Which you can't it do immediately. Yeah. You know, every host has to go on this weird journey. Where they're like, oh, I'm going to be the smart guy. And everything I say is going to be smart and incisive. And then, you know, it, you get tired. Yeah. And you can't sustain. None of these things are sustainable. You have to come back around and just be like, well, I'm this guy. You know, it's what Letterman did. And there was it came to a point with Letterman where they almost didn't even have bits anymore. Yeah, for sure. We went and talked to Paul for like twelve minutes about bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and it was great. Yeah, I'm like this is better than any sketch he might be in. Isn't it weird, by the way, that Craig Ferguson was immediately just Craig Ferguson? Yeah, he did a great job of getting right to it. Yeah, but, you know, he had a long career before we saw him. Yeah. Where I'm sure he learned the same lessons. And he's got a peculiar ego, which is not very much of one. Yeah, that helps. It's Man, peculiar help. to be in this business and to be that way. That's weird. Yeah. I mean, it's a good recipe for longevity in this business. 
um, to get over yourself to some yeah. degree. Um, you know, I had to go through a thing where early days, if I liked a joke and I submitted it and it didn't get chosen, I went through a whole thing where I hated myself. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I don't, I'm not good at this or they're idiots and they don't know what they're doing. Right. And then you just build up enough of a tolerance where like, now I submit a great joke and they don't want it. I'm like, all right, there's another one. Yeah. Yeah, I can just keep, it's a Play-Doh factory. I'll just keep cranking out Play-Doh. Yeah. Take Absolutely. what you like. Absolutely. I did a show, I did a show a few nights ago at a theater for this film. So they brought me in to warm up the crowd. And uh, and it was awesome. And then there were one or two jokes that didn't land and I could not have cared less because I liked the jokes. Yeah. And they let not nothing bombed because it wasn't a moment where I was like, ah, crap, I've lost them completely. There were just moments when I was like, well, let's get past that. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't choose that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, how great Bye, is the gym? Huh? Still alive, baby. Yep. How great is it that Jim Jordan's not the speaker? That's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. What a really good for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, who knows what's next, which is also exciting. Yeah. <laughs> like we've reached the end of whatever plan they had. Yeah, the, for sure. Uh, the Lunatic Caucus. And now it's now it's open waters. Yeah. I wonder you say that, and I'm like, boy, I can't imagine they had a plan. Well, I think this is the plan to just like paralyze everything. Ah, yeah. Not pass any bills, just clog clog up the works. Clog up the works. Yeah, do you think it's just some kind of secret, semi-secretive, they're all just libertarian lunatics who think it's better if stuff just doesn't work? I think there's a bunch of republicans who think that government is a good way to get money for your own self yeah uh and the best way to do that is to be in charge of the government and they think if oh we'll clog it up break the machine and then take it over which is what i think you know trump's whole thing was i'm gonna just extract money from this whole he isn't he's not an ideologue yeah I don't think he particularly believes in anything. I think he's fine with gay people. He doesn't care if you smoke weed. Like he's not a Republican. He just wanted to be in there because that money comes in there. Yeah. And you can siphon it off without getting in trouble if you're subtle. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think there's, it's, you know, a bunch of those dummies saw that and they were like, oh, us, we, me too, Matt Gates. Yeah. Let me get in there and uh, fuck some teenagers and get some money. Yeah. He doesn't care about anything in particular. Yeah, that's for sure. No policy being put forward. Yeah. Yeah. Let's shut down isn't a policy. I mean, I guess no. it kind of is. I it's guess a it's strategy. Yeah. 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 Doesn't seem wise to me. Oh, uh, why why it doesn't enter into it? Um, and then the other thing I wanted to bring, I want to bring up two things. You bring up anything you want, but first of all, that Taylor Swift movie is doing well. Yeah, no surprise. Yeah. And now, did she release that herself without a uh, distribution company? Like, I feel like that was part of the plan was to not go through a studio and make a bunch of money for the studio, but to go uh, her own way. And make a bunch of money for herself. Yeah. Which is what should happen. Which uh, is what should happen. She did the, she wrote the songs. Yeah. I think so. Probably. I kind of want to go now that I'm hearing what it's like, because apparently it's just people standing up in the theaters and dancing yeah. as if they were at a concert. <laughs> it's great. That sounds wonderful to me. I, I think I told you when I went to see the Barbie movie, I loved the movie. I really just enjoyed the movie, but I enjoyed more looking around and seeing all these lovely ladies in various parts of their life bonding and having a great time. I just enjoyed that. Yeah. It just was nice. I was like, look at all these nice people having a nice time. This is great. 
I generally like that kind of thing now. I don't necessarily always need to be having a good time, but if I see other people having a good time that's harmless, I'm always happy to see that. Yeah, I, that's where I'm at. I'm like, I like to watch people having a good time. Yeah, That's fun for me. I don't yeah. need to dance. No, you I don't. Dance. And then related, I watched a little bit of Beatles' Hard Day's Night, and I was like, man, people were naive back then. Because oh, yeah. you watch the clips, and... You cannot possibly believe now that any of this is the off the cuff catching them, but people believe that at the time, which is funny to me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, PR was so much easier to do back then. Yeah. John comes into the the train thing, the the carriage, and he's being wacky, John, and the girls go crazy. And I'm like, huh, they probably thought those girls weren't actors. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. We yeah. know, you know, the general public knows so much about how things are made. Yeah. It, uh, it's harder and harder and harder. The, the most egregious in that movie is all the squares, you know, the, the elders of the community who don't like them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also manufactured. Yeah, all manufactured. There were some of the, some scolds. Yeah. We talk about it all the time at the show, whether or not the public knows certain things. And it the answer is always like, yeah, they know. Like, do we have to explain that we tape earlier so we don't cover the news that happens after 6 p.m.? And we're like, no, they know. Yeah. Everybody thinks we're doing this live. Yeah. They, no, everybody knows that kind of thing. Yeah, and I, I think people used to not know, right? Yeah. it's it, They don't find it weird when a guest starts plugging their movie. They yeah. understand. That's why the guest is there. Yeah. It's not a normal conversation. Yeah. It's a little, it's a performance of a conversation. Yeah. Uh, with a plug. They find it weird when the guest doesn't plug something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's now very jarring. Uh, you guys had Nathan Lane on a few nights ago, right? Yeah, man. He was great. He's great. I love him because he writes 40 jokes every time he comes on. Yeah. <laughs> They're all over the place. There's always two great ones and a lot of swings. Yes. He does it. He fucking sits in his apartment at whatever age he's at and he writes like 40 jokes. Yep. Well, it's always, oh, Taylor Swift. <laughs> it's always topical. God bless him. Yeah. Yeah. I always think of Joan Rivers when he's on. Oh, because she definitely, that was her thing. That was her thing. She would show up with like probably a hundred jokes and just burn through them. Yeah. And always had more. Yeah. Always insult this celebrity, celebrity, celebrity. And then, yep. and then a few, and a few now. And then, of course, I'm old. She do those jokes, those kind of things. Yep. Seth always says when she she we had her on once. Um and he's like, I didn't even ask her questions, I just said topics. <laughs> it's like she sat down and I was like, How's your family? <laughs> and then she went for five minutes. And he's like, Great. Seen any movies? Five more minutes. <laughs> that was great. What do you like to eat? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, that's it was pretty like fantastic. Easiest work day ever. That's pretty great. Yeah, any of those guys who are self-propelled, actually funny, understand that under and understand the game, not just that they're funny, yeah. but they understand the form. Yes. It, the game. Yep. I remember years ago, Tom Snyder. No, none of you will remember Tom Snyder. <laughs> but Tom Snyder did a show called Tomorrow because it was very late. I think it was actually on at 1 a.m. at some point or 12. Oh, yes. And he I would interview him. different people. And he was that's all he did. He was just a true broadcaster. He'd bring a person out, they'd talk, the show was over. Yep. He, he said his worst interview was he was asked sometime. He said, My worst interview was the guy who had climbed Mount Everest. <laughs> and you would think that this guy would be great, but it was just a guy who doesn't know how to talk to people who happen to climb Mount Everest. Yeah. And he well, could have made the story more. less interesting. <laughs> yeah. 
Whereas you get a person like Joan Rivers and she goes and gets a sandwich. She's got a funny thing to say about the awful waiter or the service or the sandwich oh. itself. And you enjoy it more than the idiot about the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's the, the story isn't the thing that happened to you. It's how you tell it. Yeah. All right. So what did we pick this week? Do you remember? I don't remember. All right. The night is still young. Oh, uh, shit. I should have remembered because I love that song. It is a good song. Let me ask you. I'll see if you have the same opinion I do. Who is he singing like initially? Oh, good. Because he does well, something vocally he doesn't usually do or ever. He does something weird at the very beginning of that song. Um, I am still Googling. <laughs> Because I accidentally looked up a, a Nicki Minaj song uh -huh. <laughs> with the same title. BillyJoel.com, baby. BillyJoel.com. I'm still, here we go. Nope, I don't need a video. Oh my God. Anyway, who does he sound like? Yeah, who do you? If you could place it like who, I don't think he's aping anybody. I just think he happened. He sounds very much like somebody else that you like. <laughs> hmm. This is a good question. I'm trying yeah. to hear it in my head. It's weird because he's, I don't think he has done this particular way of singing the first line. Yeah. Ever. Then I this one. Right. It's a, there's some Elvis in it. Okay. So I was going to say he sounds a little bit like Hall and Oates. Oh, wow. Probably Oates. Yeah. The very beginning of that song, he it reminds me of a Hall and Oates tune. Okay. And it's jarring to me because then he stops doing that. <laughs> he does. He does really. He does bail out of that. I thought it was more like an old-fashioned crooner vibe. But there it's definitely R and B. That's yeah. Because it sounds it sounds almost it, it, I don't know if he's harmonizing with himself or it's if it's double tracked. But I feel I remember reading years ago when that song came out that he used a vocal splitter where you can sing into a microphone and it will record. Two, your voice one octave higher and lower. Oh. So it'll record your actual voice and then your voice an octave lower. And I think that's what he was using for that. So it sounds like two voices, but they're very perfectly matched. Yeah. It's an interesting effect. Yeah. That's, that's what I thought. Okay. So he's, that's interesting because I, that's what makes it sound like hollow notes because it sounds like yeah. one of their harmony things. That would make sense. Oats would yeah. be the low voice and Hall would be the high voice. Yeah. <laughs> and it's jarring to me only because he stopped so quickly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's no like, you're just like, all right, enough of that. Yep. On to the it, next thing. I did that for exactly one line. So then what? why? I don't mind it. The song's good. It doesn't really matter, but it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm looking at what the lines are about, and it makes sense to split yourself. Yeah, true. Okay. Just talking about being a young a young boy and an old man. Yeah. Which, uh, was he ever a young man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Even in Attila, he looks 35. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, I'll st I'll start. I'll start. start. Right. Come on, it's mouth. Weird. We don't love the sh lyric shape. I hope no. uh, it makes up for it. <laughs> My muscle relaxers, man. My mouth. Um, oh, nice. Take another one right now. <laughs> Just keep uh, taking them and done. Huh? Just keep taking pills until you can't talk anymore. That's a good challenge. Uh, yeah, that that'll be a fun show. <laughs> For the TikTokers out there? Yeah. 
I'm young enough to still see the passionate boy I used to be, but I'm old enough to say I got a good look at the other side. I like that. Right. I know we got to work real hard, maybe even for the rest of our lives. Boo, but true. <laughs> <laughs> but right now, I just want to take what I can get tonight. Familiar feeling. That was pretty naughty. I like that. Yeah, it's a little saucy. Yeah. And you know, the R&B flavor, I might as well, I'll tell you the chorus. While the night is still young, I want to keep making love to you while the night is still young. That's an R&B song anyway. For sure. That lovely and sentiment. <laughs> it's also a great old man sentiment. Yeah. Because let's do it early. <laughs> But early in the evening. <laughs> and yeah, then uh, put on some law and orders. Yeah, let's be done by seven. <laughs> <laughs> no particular reason. I well, also then... like the illusion that a lot of dudes are under, and I've certainly been on, under myself, which is, you know, you're really in a romantic mood and there's a nice lady and there she's willing and you think, ah, this is going to go on all night. No, it ain't. <laughs> No. No, maybe there was a time. Once. <laughs> maybe. But. Yeah, and you're right. There was a time when it went a lot longer than you thought, and you were like, oh, this is nice. Yep. Why is this still going? Great. But yeah, you don't... Uh, and, and as a young man, you never think that that will sound bad. Yeah, but there comes a day. <laughs> no more. Yeah. The There's night been... By the way, lyrically, I think the night is the a metaphor for his lifetime. Agreed. Um, this seems to be about a little middle age panic. Yeah. Or regret, or. Just wanting to grab the brass ring while you still can. Yeah. Um, so I, I think, you know, our theorizing about the perfect time of night for lovemaking <clears throat> might be beside the point. I know we got to work real hard, maybe even for the rest of our lives. It's a pretty brutal line. And yep. it's a, a line I think Mr. Billy Joel could relate to because people kept stealing his money. Yes. And a very bluesy R and B sentiment. Yeah, I'd like it's the you know one of the older themes in R and B or the blues, where it's like, well, we work real hard all day and then we party on the weekend. Yeah, um, and that's how it goes. But the man takes all your money, but you still got babes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it sounds very classic. Yeah, it's good because it sounds classic, but it doesn't sound too trodden, in my opinion, just because it feels like he's writing a thing that I believe Billy Joel could relate to, not just some character. Right. I Yeah, I believe this is his middle age panic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and how it looks to him. Yeah. And I don't think he likes the idea that he's got to work real hard <laughs> for the rest of his life. Um, yeah. Evidenced by the fact that he's now finally at a place where he barely has to work. Yeah. I wonder if he has to. I bet he does. I bet he needs the whatever money he makes from his monthly concert. I'm sure he does because also they, you know, the experience. <laughs> When you're young and you don't have much money, but it's just kind of just enough money. And then you make some more yeah. money and you're like, oh, why is this still just enough money? And you make some more money and you're like, yeah, so any amount is just enough money? Oh, Lord. Yeah. It finds places to go. Yeah. Yeah. And that will always be true until you become, unless you become a lunatic amount of rich. And then you just become mm -hmm. an unpleasant monster for the most part. Yes. And then you become an industry where, you know, he now supports his family, but he also supports this network yeah. of 
studios and engineers and all these people who depend on him to make their livings. He's probably oh, yeah, musician, to, other musicians, other musicians. Like he could take a year off from concerts, but can his saxophone player? Right. That's true. And, and you know, he has to consider, you have to decide how responsible you're going to feel for these people. And it's got to be hundreds. Yeah. Saxophone, you know, roadies. Um, uh, student publishing. Silly you know, t-shirt fucking, sales guy. His kid's guitar teacher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's an enormous. And I'm sure he's feeling the stress of it. By the way, All so right. this, I'm looking, it's on Billy Joel Greatest Hits Volume 1 and Volume 2, which is kind of funny because there's no sense in which this is a hit, but fine. Yeah, uh, well, this was, a, this was one of two bonus tracks. Yeah, but one of the better pictures for an album cover. Yes, agreed. Whoever very, did, yeah. Very sharp. It also, he does the thing that good photographers know, like if you've got eyes like mine which billy joel does where he has that where you yep. pick an angle like this <laughs> so yep. instead of this <laughs> like let's, let's angle it down so you don't see this the sack <laughs> down eyes up yeah much more charming less tired looking <laughs> <laughs> world weary yes um, not so much regular weary yeah all right i'll do this next chunk i'd like to settle down get married and maybe have a child someday i can see a time coming when i'm gonna throw my suitcase out nice no more separations where you have to say good night to a telephone baby i've decided that ain't what this life is all about mm -hmm. Oh, while well, the night is still young, I want to keep making love to you while well, the night is still young. I like throw my suitcase out. Yeah. Um, obviously, that time never comes. <laughs> I don't I don't know anyone. <laughs> the oldest people I know have lots of suitcases. Yeah. Um, obviously, just a metaphor. And I well, like uh, when you have to say goodnight to a telephone. I like that. Not through a telephone or by telephone. He really breaks it down to the way it feels when you're in a hotel room and you're saying goodnight and the person hangs up and you're just talking to a telephone. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. I would say, too, the other thing is throw my suitcase out. It's... It's a specific suitcase he's looking forward to throwing out. It's the suitcase oh, that's that you I go like that. on the road with. Huh? I like that. Yeah. The one I use for work. Yeah. Work. The gigs that are dragging me away. It's not the suitcase he and his family go to, you know, Greece with. It's, <laughs> it's the suitcase that he's by himself trying, trying to just, you know, Put his, you know, put his money together and do the touring and the whatever. Yeah. Do you have in your life a work bag or suitcase versus the other kind? Yes. And never the twain shall meet. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think I do too. I have, uh, I have a, it's a, it's a hanging bag that has three outfits in it, right? Mm -hmm. And it just sits in the closet and. In the bottom of it are show shoes. So I have a couple of different show shoes. And right. um, on for a number of reasons, principle is one of them, but also psychological, I don't do anything else in those shoes. Yeah, nice. And they're very nice, but they're very nice in a like a casual way. They're they're Nikes, but they're very colorful and but they're a solid block color because I've concluded I don't like too many colors going on in a in an outfit for performing yeah that makes sense and there just should be in my opinion there should be this thing that the outfit looks fully intentional the outfit looks put together i don't want it doesn't have to be fancy it can be 
you don't don't have to wear a tie. I don't. I'm not that comedian, but I definitely wear a look that lets you know that I showed up to do a job. Right. And I'm lets always, you know. Huh? And it lets you know that too when you put it on. Absolutely. It, it's business time. I am always blown away when some hump shows up to a show with a backpack. Oh yeah. I'm like, you're you're not a comic as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> And are those guys ever funny? Sure, sometimes they are, but they're never consistently funny. They're never funny throughout because they- but They're obviously not thinking about the whole act. Yeah, they didn't put enough thought into it. Those are the guys who will have one joke about their girlfriend and then another joke about how hard it is to date. And you'll think about how the two jokes don't work together for the same guy because they can't both be true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have that problem with a lot of comics. I'm like, hey, you just said you were bad at this thing. Yeah. Now you're saying you're good at it. Yeah. Pick a joke. Yeah, and stop you, doing You just wanted to keep both jokes. That's what happened. Yeah, you like both. Yeah. Yeah, he's got, they've got a kitchen sink act. Uh-huh. Yeah. So who is the stand-up you think uh, nails it with uh, the look? Seinfeld absolutely nails it. Yes. He, and he's, I think he's always dressed up nowadays, but I think he always has. Yeah. Um, who else? That's because I think because we're talking about people who are famous, not just numb nuts. I yeah. know. <laughs> um, we want to uh, be relatable to the audience here. Yeah. So, well, for those folks who still enjoy Louis C.K. and are okay with him, he does the drab. But it's an out. It's definitely an outfit. Yes. It's not. Nothing about that is accidental. No, it's a consciously designed blue collar look. Yeah. I think uh, for sure he does. Know he's guilty, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, you, you certainly don't think about it. Yeah, um, and on I the think, other uh, end, who I think is really funny, but Pat Oswalt, I'm not always convinced thought about it very much. Ah, or thought about it too much, I think, sometimes. Yeah. Or I'm like, oh, that's a little much. Yeah. For what you're doing here. Yeah. Um, I think Gary Coleman's always good. Um, Nate Bergazzi. Yeah. Uh, really pulled it together. <laughs> like, yeah. I, don't, I think historically not always true. That last special, I was like, that jacket rules. <laughs> it's perfect for what he's doing. Yeah. Amy Schumer never quite gets it right. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen much of hers. She did. So she really can't picture anything in particular that she's been wearing. So she did a special not that long ago where she was wearing a leather suit or a leather oh. outfit. And she did it on purpose to her credit because she had thought that she wanted to do like female version of like the Eddie Murphy outfit, the leather. Okay. But it didn't look right. Yeah. It didn't look good or comfortable. That's a, the thing that will take you out of it, is when you're watching somebody and they don't look comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> start empathizing with their discomfort. Yeah. I that, When uh, Eddie Murphy's second special came out, I had that problem. And I think As it was wrong. Yeah. I thought, like, he looks so hot. Right. And uncomfortable and unhappy in there. Yeah. You you wonder why. Because then the other thing is it kind of destroys part of the illusion, I think, of stand-up that this person is talking to you and they're telling you jokes that they just thought of. And we all know that that's not the case. Right. But it's part of the magic is that it feels very much of the moment. Yes. And when you have this fucking leather monstrosity on... Yeah. You, nobody know, woke yeah. up that morning and went, well, what would be nice to bop around in this? <laughs> really? No. Yeah, I know you're not telling me stuff you just thought of. Yeah. Yeah, because if you told me stuff you just thought of, you'd tell me, ooh, I think I'm stinky right now. <laughs> right. My shoes are full of sweat. <laughs> Yeah, he only pulls it off because at the time that was Eddie Murphy in his prime where he could kind of just do anything. Oh, yeah. 
But even just looking at it now, you're like, you know who doesn't pull it off? Uh, Pete Davidson just looks like shit most of the time. <laughs> but he seems yeah. like a really nice guy, and that's fine. Yeah, I mean, he's, I don't know what, he always dresses like that, which is something. Yeah. Like on a Monday at SNL, he looked like that. So I'm like, okay, clearly this is your look. And now it's yeah. like a yeah. expensive version of the same look. Yeah. Um, it, yeah, I, it bugs me, but I think it's not for me. Yeah. And he was legitimately funny anyway, so. Oh, absolutely. So he did the part that matters, but as far as outfits go. It was the the bleached hair for me. <laughs> That's when I was out. Really? When he just did SNL just now and he had his normal hair color back, I was very happy. Yeah. I was again, like, yeah, that's what you look like. Okay. That now you don't look right. stupid. Clearly you're doing fine. Yeah, young young dudes every now and then make that mistake. They color their hair for some stupid reason. Sure. Did you ever I, do that? Yeah. <laughs> I uh so at one point because when I was a kid, I really liked the television show Wild Wild West. Sure. And I really liked Jim West in particular, like not just, you know, Artemis Gordon was fine, but I liked Jim West. Yeah. And uh, Jim West had that great cowboy black hair. And I yeah. just really liked how black his hair was. It was just dark or Elvis, you know. So at one point I dyed my hair like jet black. <laughs> and man, I looked stupid. <laughs> yeah. Like, not even goth, more just, like, goth is one thing, but more just sickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, we Nobody thought about skin tone when we were doing those experiments. Nope. And the other thing is I did it myself. I didn't go have it done. And there's these gloves you put on, you know, but oh, there's, yeah. I guess, a hole in them. So for a little while, I also had black hands. Ha, <laughs> ha. Fantastic. A really good look. <laughs> True. Very sickly. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Man's about to lose his hands. Died a while ago. <laughs> Rock and roll music was the only thing I ever gave a damn about. Great. That's probably true. There was something that was missing. Now I know you're the one I needed to make things right again. And I may lose the battle. But you're giving me the will to try. Great. Yes. The night is still young. I want to still make love to you. Keep making love to you. Because the night is still young. Got a lot of catching up to do. What? While the night is still young. While the night is still young. And uh, there's one more course. I'll let you read that after we're done with this because it's actually different. It's uh, Yeah, it's wild. There was something that was missing, but I... I but I never used to wonder why. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, you that, that feeling of like, yeah, life sucks. I guess it just that's the way it is. Not how can I fix this? Right. I'll just uh, drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or smoke some weed or just uh, write a poem. Yep. I may lose the battle, but you're giving me the will to try. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's also very defeatist. Yeah. Very, very Billy Joel. That's super Billy Joel. I've met a wonderful person. This probably ain't going to work out, but. Makes me want to try. <laughs> yeah. That's the highest compliment he has for this lady. Yeah. <laughs> you make me want to try not to die. <laughs> Thanks, babe. I liked just uh, rock and roll music was the only thing I ever gave a damn about. I like that, too. Like a real... And it's just like a good rock and roll line, but it yeah. also sounds very confessional in this context. Yeah. I mean, you most, if anybody else sang that line, I think you would think, well, yeah, of course, Mick Jagger, rock and roll music. But in this case, you're like, oh, oh, that's a little bit sad. <laughs> Maybe we just know him better. Yeah. <laughs> 91 episodes. Yeah. Oh, no. I thought you cared so much about, first of all, piano music, classical music, your father. You, you were very angry about your mother and that one song. Yeah. World events. You love listing those. 
Now you're telling me it's just rock and roll? No. Yeah, it feels with even without the next line, it feels like there was something missing. Yeah, for sure. And also, you know, his career in rock and roll is a career of wanting to be seen one way as an absolute rocker, <laughs> but yeah. that that was never quite going to happen. Right. You have this other thing. You're very close. You definitely play rock and roll, but you're not. Mick Jagger's a great example. You're not that. Right. You're not that kind of showman. Yeah. Front man. You're like in your own band. You're yeah. Not really in front of it. Yeah. You have this quiet. It's, you know, it's very similar to the, the journey I was talking about with talk show hosts. Yeah. Where they, they put on all these different, like, I'm the rock and roll guy. Oh, I'm the pian, I'm the wandering troubadour. And now I'm the, you know, the hard punk guy. And it just eventually doesn't get good until it's like, just, this is me. Yeah. I'm, this guy. I'm the guy who I'm plays some songs you remember. Yeah. I play pretty melodies and I complain about shit. <laughs> and um, those are the best ones. Yeah, absolutely. Always. So we got this one more chorus. Yeah, super weird. While the night is still young, I want to try to make the world brand new. While the night is still young, I want to keep making love to you. While the night is still young, while the night is still young, the night is still young, should and gotta be in love, baby? That's pretty the interesting. Night is still young. Got a lot of catching up to do. While the night is still young. Hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on. While the night is still young. I really like, I want to try to make the world brand new. I like that too. I don't think he means the world. And obviously he, he's like, I want to have a new outlook on the existing world. Yeah. Via sex with you. <laughs> yeah. And I want that sex in particular i want that sex to feel the way it used to i want <laughs> it to feel like it matters and i don't want to feel like something is missing anymore yeah i don't want and it to feel hollow and because there's just def definitely different kinds of sex that you've ever had where when you're done you're like god that just was only sex wasn't it <laughs> yeah and then those I'm moments where it, was... it didn't work. <laughs> Say it again. Always a little surprised that it didn't work. Yeah. But, but it's sex. Yeah. It's supposed to, and that's supposed to be the goal of everything. <laughs> How come it didn't work? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. No one. Um, I also like that he sings all of this in a way that conveys to you that he knows it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> I want I to try to make the world brand new. You know, it's not going to work, but that's what I want to try. I want to try. Yeah. <laughs> that is yeah. very Billy Joel, isn't it? That's just yeah. pretty great. And, he, you know, and when this song came, he's not that old when this song came out. Yeah. This but is Lord, hard. he's one of those guys like uh, Steve Martin in comedy or he's one of these yeah. guys who had been on the road so much. Yeah. He had a lot of miles of, you know, disappointments. And I was talking to my wife about this because my wife's a performer as well. Brilliant uh, singer. Um, she uh, she and I we were talking because she was talking about a friend of hers who's young, who and young, young, like 20s, early 20s, who had done this show where she got like multiple standing ovations and she was really happy about everything and just really motivated and we were just talking about the funny experience you'll have now where sometimes i'll do a show and it'll be amazing and i immediately know that doesn't mean anything <laughs> right and there's something great about that too you know like because i've been in movies you know like i was really good in this one movie where i got a good review called desperation boulevard 
and I got a really good review in Playboy.com. <laughs> they wrote me, they gave a good review of the movie and me in particular, my performance. Right. And when you read that, when you're in the moment, you're like, oh, here we go. And then <laughs> it doesn't yeah. necessarily mean anything. And even if it did, it doesn't mean anything. Right. So you need to find a way to just be in the damn moment. Yeah. Take it face value and don't try to cash it. Yeah. Yeah. Like the thing you said about writing a joke that somebody you know is funny that people don't react to. Yeah. Walk away and write a different joke. Yeah. You wrote writing a great joke is hard and it's it should be its own little reward and then anything that comes from it after that is frosting yeah like well i did it and that's you know it's also such a comfort every time to know that you can still do it yeah because comedy is one of those things that doesn't get much easier and you do feel like well there's many times i go into work and i'm like I think I may have written my last good joke. <laughs> and then you write another one. And you're like, oh, okay, still here. I'm still here. Yeah. Well, so- day, you come in the next day and you're like, how do you write jokes again? Fuck. Do you sometimes feel ha- hamstrung by the fact that you've gotten to the point now where you instinctively know all the tricks? Yeah. And it was nicer when you didn't necessarily, even if you used the tricks, it was nicer when you didn't recognize they were tricks. Sure. Yes. And I do, I have like a two tiered system when I work now, where my first couple of passes through the setups, I'm trying to write uh, to joke no one could have thought of the best possible. <laughs> you know, groundbreaking joke on this topic. Yeah. I grab at that for an hour or two. And then there's a pass where I'm like, all right, tricks time. I'm bringing out the misdirects and the puns and all the stuff that you know will work. And, you know, not that that's easy. But no. Easier. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I know what'll get a laugh if not necessarily be really funny. Yeah. Um, But the first couple of passes, I'm like, let me change the world. Right. And once in a while, you squeeze out a joke or two, and you're like, fuck, that's fucking great. There you go. Yeah. No one else will have this. Yeah. Um, And, you know, if you can do it, if I can write two of those a week, I'm fine. One night I was doing stand-up and everybody had for some reason everybody was mad that Whitney Cummings had a TV show (laughs) and that's the thing with stand-up comics there's a lot of stand-up comics who get mad when another stand-up comic gets something yeah particularly if they're not convinced that person is funny right and I think and I have thought for a long time well it doesn't really matter if you well it doesn't matter if I think they're funny it only matters that somebody thinks they're funny and yeah so that stopped bothering me a long time ago. Because And also, I was like, if Whitney Cummings gets a TV show, they're not taking it from you. <laughs> right. Yeah, you that's the thing people can't seem to see. Yeah. You weren't yeah. going to get that. Yeah. So and you can get a TV show. There's lots of room for TV shows. Yeah. So I did a set that night where I just made fun of those comics for a while. And it crushed. It was really funny because it was just irritating me so much. And I used myself as the foil, even though I was really making fun of them. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because it was one of those nights where the jokes, I was like, these are, this is amazing what I'm doing. (laughs) And I'll never be able to do this again. Right. And it was of the moment. And just be there and enjoy the fuck out of it. Yeah. And I felt so good. And um, so one of the comics go yelled out because he was there. Were, people were laughing, and but one comic goes, "Like you're any better?" And I go, "That's the fucking point. I'm not." And then that <laughs> ended up being the whole thing. It was great. Great. <laughs> I love that. Uh, even another comic didn't see what you were doing. Yeah. <laughs> Dummies. 
there are so many comics who don't. It's always that's always really funny when a comic doesn't get what you're doing. That's always pretty. Oh funny. yeah, yeah. Like if anybody should know how this works. But then I've also been that comic who went, ah, crap. Okay, now I see what you're doing. So I've been that guy. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we all have. So what I do you still... think? This is a good song, right? This is a great song, I think. Yeah. Um, it's funny because it, there were two bonus tracks on that album, and the other one was uh, Second Wind. Right. You're only human. Um, which I didn't love. And this one that I think uh, rules. Yeah. And it's really that... one was kind of a hit too, huh? Yeah. And this wasn't. This was not. You're only this human. So like a real Billy Joel song. <laughs> Yeah, Your Only Human is just absolutely a pop song. Absolutely. Yeah, Written. that was a manufactured hit. Yeah. With a stupid video. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, in this, this song is too good in a certain way to ever really be a hit. Yeah. Um, which is a bummer, but also, you know, universally true. The best stuff is never loved by the most people. Yeah, and people come around to it. Yep, which is half half of half of his th- playlist. If you go see Billy Joel live, are songs that weren't hits. Yeah, that he loves. Yeah, and that some of them don't make any sense that they're not hits to you. But then, if you thought about it for a minute, you'd go, "Oh yeah, well, they weren't going to play scenes from an Italian restaurant on the radio." <laughs> right. Yeah, not the whole thing anyway. But how is that not a hit? Yeah. Don't know. It's a it's classic. Absurd. Yeah. It's something better than a hit, I guess. Yeah. Well, oh, there you go. Get a little guy visiting us. Oh, look at this guy. Now it's very hard to tell who that is. Yeah. It looks like Billy Joel at like 17. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Billy the kid. Yeah, that's Billy the Kid. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was two in a row. I did that's two in a row. <laughs> Every now and then I like to do that. Because for a while, I just, as many times as I could, come up with a picture that's for Big Shot. But that's getting harder and harder now. Yeah, no doubt. Um, but fucking great. Yep, there's Billy the Kid. Billy the Kid. I had a picture of him even younger, like uh, he was in grade school, just a cute little kid, as everybody is, (laughs) perfectly. But I like this one because it looks like Billy Joel, but not quite. But I also like for Ballad of Billy the Kid, I'm like, it looks like he's dressed as a mobster. (laughs) It kind of does. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He looks like the mobster. Hold on a second. Go ahead. Uh, he looks like a mob, a mobster's kid who's getting into the business, and right now he just parks cars. Oh yeah, what was that movie with uh, Chaz Palminteri? I don't know. Oh, yeah, a Bronx Tale. A Bronx Tale. Yeah. Yep. The quote from that is: "It better to be loved or feared." Was the one of the quotes from that? Yes. It uh, was made into a musical. <laughs> uh, and I took my sister to see it. Is that true? Am I right? Yeah, my sister. Uh, and the audience was full of mobsters. That's great. It was great. And wow. then at the end, it's, so it goes on forever. It's a terrible musical. Uh, and at the end, they're like, curtain call, bow, bow, bow. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaz Palminteri. And they bring him out. And then he talked for like 20 minutes about all kinds of bullshit. And some charity and his new restaurant. And you guys got to come down to the new restaurant. And I was like, oh my God. He's like mob adjacent i guess wow. or he wants all these mobsters to come to his restaurant wild that's pretty great and the show was awful eh? so it was awful yeah i don't know how it could be good no it, there was never a chance 
Great. It's moment, a good movie. Though. Yeah, it is a good movie. It's just not meant to be a musical. Like, <laughs> well, I say that, I guess a lot of serious subjects have become good musicals. Just hard to picture it working. Yeah. It, I bet it could be done well. Yeah. Just not by the person who did it. Yeah, because you can't. So it's you're either going to accidentally do Guys and Dolls again. Right. Or and, West Side Story. Yeah. Yeah. And it did have a lot of both of those in it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is not just not it's past its sell by date. Yeah. You, yeah, I guess what you really need is you need to almost do like something like a modern, a more modern musical where the music literally is the people talking part of the story. Right. Like super modern in that sense. You can't do the stop and sing musical. It's got to be <laughs> no. like Les Mis style or it's got to be, yeah. Hamilton. <laughs> Hamilton is a good that example, be, like something like that. Rapping mobsters. Oh, I fucking love that. <laughs> I wonder if you could do it where it was all Sicilian sounding music, like old country sounding might work. Oh, yeah. So that, that would be the work. Hamilton approach, but that way. Yeah. No, this one was very much uh, like Great American Songbook sound alikes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was gross. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, my dog. We know uh, Billy Joel's won many Grammys. Oh, yeah. Tony's even. Um, did did not win an Emmy, but he was nominated once for a Primetime Emmy Award. For what? Primetime Emmy Award. For Saturday Night Live. And no, sir. What else could he have won an Emmy for? Oh, oh, was it for eh, something dumb like um, one of those nighttime shows that they used to have singers on? Nighttime shows. Yeah. Variety show? <laughs> no, you remember when they used to have, well, obviously I'm wrong, but like when Wolfman Jack hosted a show and it'd be some sing. No. Um, uh, the Billy Joel Cavalcade of Stars. <laughs> it was for Billy Joel in his own words. Oh, a documentary on A and E in two thousand and two. Oh, cool! I bet it's actually pretty good. Apparently, it's very good. Yeah, and I, just, I don't think I've ever seen it. That'd be worth watching. Oh, by the way, I did watch the Muppets doing for what it's worth. <laughs> Oh, Remember you suggested that. How great was it? It's pretty fantastic. It's pretty fantastic, right? Yep. It's why it's really hard to reboot the Muppets without Jim <laughs> Henson. It's why people get because they get part of it wrong always because yeah. they're missing his weird instincts. Yes. Um. Yeah, it's like a sound alike, not a sound alike. It's like definitely his vibe, but without the edge, the extra, the extra, the edge. Yeah, because everybody else, when they go in, I think they think to themselves, and rightfully so, they think, "Well, these are these are puppets, so right. it's just for kids." And he didn't think of that it that way. No. And people who make stuff for kids who don't think that way make the best stuff for kids. Right. Everybody yes. who, yeah. Like a little Everybody, trick you have to play on yourself. Yeah. Everybody who thinks, well, we got to make it safe for kids is making the worst content for kids. Yeah, that kids don't like. Yeah. Make kids, stuff for human don't, beings. Kids don't want shit for kids. They yeah. want. They want what we're eating. That's right. Have to sort of fool them into thinking they're getting that. Yeah. As it turns out, they're people. And they're people that have very awful time. Because I remember being a kid and you don't know nothing and everything's confusing. It's very visceral. 
Yeah, you don't understand what pandering. Yeah. Like, so this a little bit of it's ex- scary and weird, and I want to see t- tell me something real. Yeah, absolutely. I need this information. All right. So next uh ep- next episode is 92. 92, baby. What are we doing? Well, that depends on whether we have done <laughs> Rosalinda's eyes. No, we have not. Let's do it. Rosalinda's eyes. Yeah, we'll see how many pills I'm on next week. Fantastic. Yeah, Tell me, fun. text me beforehand, and I'll take whatever you're taking. <laughs> Let's do that. <laughs> or Let's... I'll counter program you. Right. I'll you take alpha relaxers. I'll take a bunch of Adderall. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be our best episode yet.